I'm here with one of my favorite little wildflowers, red clover. It's actually purple, but it's just like the red onion, purple onion thing. Um, so red clover is not native to here, but it's a legume. It's very analogous to some of our native clovers. So when people talk about invasive versus native, of course, preserving native plants is always of utmost importance because it affects the whole ecosystem and animals that rely on those native plants for food sources, habitat, etc. And it's a balance that's been struck over thousands to millions of years. However, some plants that have become naturalized um, aren't as much of a threat to native species or they occupy a similar niche or ecological function. Um, so red clover as a legume fixes nitrogen in the soil. It's one of the most preferred forage crops of all the four-leggeds. Um, the vast majority of pollinators absolutely love nectar from almost every type of clover. So it's a, it's a very beloved plant, although it is introduced. Additionally, red clover has a whole host of medicinal properties, and I'm not even going to try to, you know, expound all of them in this video, um, because um, overall it's, I would say, just a very gentle, nutritive body supporter. And so by that I mean it's got a lot of vitamins and minerals. Um, it's just overall good for um, soothing and tonifying all of your organs. Um, it's, it's something that you could eat in moderation. But most people pick the flowering tops and make a tea out of it. And so some of the more traditional uses are for respiratory issues, um, asthma and allergies. Uh, it's used to um, uh, purify the blood and clear the skin. It can be used internally and externally for the skin. And it's also been cited in helping to support optimal lymphatic function. So for the immune system. So um, yeah, a whole slew of uses beautiful plant. It's, it's an introduced species, but it's very useful. So we keep her.